guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be doing a question and answer. Yay! Oh, no, that sounded stupid. Okay, let's start over again. Today we're gonna to be doing a question and answer with Roxanne. All right, let's just get to the questions. So I went to a video, why can't I talk today? <sighs> All right, get your shit together, Roxanne. Let's do this. Now, you know, I'm not doing like edits to where I edit all this stuff out and do music and all that stuff. I'm just keeping it basic. So this is, this is me. I mess up like a million times. Anyway, let's get started with this. I asked on a previous video, what questions you guys would like to know? I also went to Instagram and asked there, what would you like to know? And I got a quite a few questions, so we're gonna answer those today. The good, the bad, and the ugly. All right, let's see, let's get started. So the first question is, how big is Grayson? Grayson is 56 pounds. She is my old English sheepdog. She looks a whole lot bigger than what she really is, and really, to be honest, she's a little bit smaller than what I thought she was going to be. I thought she was gonna be a little bit bigger than that, but she just got spayed, and I can go into that video. Um, just ask if you would like to see that video and why I decided on that, but this is another topic. Um, anyway, she's 56 pounds, but she she will probably get to about 60 pounds full grown. OESs tend to grow for two to three years, so she still has some growing to do, but she looks a whole lot bigger than what she is. So next question is, um, someone asked if I could do a bath video of Grayson and Finley. I can do that, but it's going to have to wait a few months until I get into my new house because right now Grayson goes to the groomer to get her baths and Finley just gets bathed in the, the shower and it's nothing special. So when I get to my new house, I will do that video, I promise. The next question here is, what happened to your cat? As some of you know from way back in previous videos, I had quite a few cats and most of those cats were old and so just over the past three years, um, I lost a couple of the cats that were left and the youngest kitty went to live with my son when he went to um, college. So she is with him in college and now I just have the dogs and that is perfectly fine with me. Do you, <laughs> okay, y'all, this question. So this question has actually been um, asked on a couple of different videos, like for a long time. And so I figured, you know what? Let me just put it out there. So do you wear a wig? First of all, why does that matter? Second of all, even if I did, like what's wrong with that? Or maybe you just want to know to be curious. So let's go with that. Um, first of all, no, I do not wear a wig. I've never worn a wig. Not that I have anything against wigs because trust me, if it made me feel beautiful and if that's what I needed to or wanted to wear, I would wear a wig. I have no shame in my game. And there are some gorgeous lace front wigs out there. I know quite a few women that wear wigs. They look beautiful. Um, a lot of celebrities wear wigs. So I have nothing against wigs. I actually have a friend of mine who makes gorgeous lace front wigs. They're beautiful. Uh, but no, I've never worn a wig. But I do have extensions. So quite expensive extensions, by the way. Um, I've had extensions for about five years, probably as long as I've had this channel, I have had extensions in my hair. Um, if you look back at the older videos, they were not so pretty extensions, but over time I have gotten some gorgeous extensions and this is what I've been wearing for the past three years. So at least three years, maybe even longer. Um, but what is funny about it, Harper's trying to find her spot. 
what's funny about it is just before I started this video, I went to the bathroom and I was um, looking at my hairbrush and I actually lost one of my extensions this morning. Now this never happens. I never lose them. Um, they actually are pretty good, but I was like, oh, how perfect. Let me show them my extensions, like not outside, or, you know, like not on my hair. So I have individual, ha individual human hair extensions. Each one of these are $12.50. Add it up, I have 150 in my hair. Yeah, it's a lot, it's a lot. Um, but I love it, they last for a very, very long time because they are put in my hair, they're put on my real hair with locks. So this is, you can maybe you can see it or not, I don't know. This is a little lock at the end of this extension. So what happens is my stylist will um, take a piece of my own hair, which by the way, my hair is just as long as the extensions, if not longer, because I haven't had a haircut, like a real haircut in years. So my hair is just as long as this, it's just not as full. Um, as my extensions and that is why I choose to to keep getting my extensions. It's also Much easier. I find to deal with my hair with my extensions mixed in with my regular hair because my hair gets really frizzy in like the humidity and So this hair just does better. It's you know, it's a little bit easier to manage down here in the south where I live and I just love them and I am not gonna apologize and I'm gonna wear them and I'm gonna rock them for as long as I possibly can. And then when I can't afford it anymore, I'll buy a wig because that's probably what I wanna do because I'm used to, I'm used to hair. Um, I am a little thin on the top so that the extensions help with that. But what she does is she takes a piece of hair and then she put, puts the extension in with my strand of hair and there's a little lock that she clamps together and she does that all around my head for 150 of these extensions. And um, then about every two months or so when your hair grows, because your hair grows out, she I will go in and she will open up the lock, push up the extension to my scalp, crimp it back and then I go about my business for the next 10 weeks or so and it's really good it's not damaging to my hair when she takes all of the extensions out my hair is very long it's just not as thick and I like the thickness of the extension so it is what it is but I don't wear a wig so um Sorry to burst your bubble or anything like that. I don't know. Um, anyway, but the two products that I do use, because I do get that a lot, like what do you use in your hair? So I'm just gonna quickly, quickly um, go over that. One is the Wella Lux Oil. I love it. It is so amazing. It's just a smoothing oil that I just put in my hair, just put a little bit in my hands and it smells so good. And I will leave the link to that in the description box below in case you're interested in it. It smells amazing, it works amazing, it keeps the frizzies away, and I love it. The other hair product that I cannot live without is my flat iron. I love this flat iron. I used to have another brand, but that brand broke on me twice. And um, so my hairstylist recommended this brand. It's the, Ch um, not the Chi, I had a Chi like years ago. I don't know why I went to almost say Chi, but no, I haven't had a Chi in a while. This is the Paul Mitchell Neuro. And this little baby is awesome. It has the temperature that you can, you know, set so that you don't burn your hair. It makes it really smooth, really straight, and I love it. So I will try and see if I can find the link to that as well. So that is probably too much information that you wanted to know about my hair, but anyway, there it is. Um, the next thing is, is how did you train your dogs to get along? I really didn't do anything. There's nothing really that I did. I just introduced them kind of slowly. Um, I made sure that everyone got their own attention and they're all pretty good. So I've gotten really lucky, lucky with that and I'm sorry I don't have any real other true advice to give you. Um, because I know some dogs get along and some dogs don't, but I really didn't do anything in particular. All right, how old are you? I just had a birthday a few months ago and I am 54 years old. So 
a lot of people say that no way you do not look your age so thank you for those people who tell me that um, I am Italian and I must have decent genes and I tell everybody don't get too jealous because um, yes I may have good skin genes but I have the fat gene and I just look at food and gain weight so pick your poison uh, the next thing is is are you dating <sighs> yes I am dating so I, well Am I dating? I'm in a relationship. Let's just put it to you that way. So my husband passed away uh, three and a half years ago and we were married for 35 years, almost 35 years. So a very long time. Um, we got married when I was extremely young. Do the math, very young. Uh, and I waited about a year after he passed away, but I, you know, I was young. I was young and I knew that I had to get back in the saddle, so they say. And so I did date and I dated um, quite a, well, quite a few guys. No, I mean, I dated a few. I dated a few guys until I met my current boyfriend and we have been together for two years. So if you go back on my Instagram and you go all the way down and you see that cute, sexy little Latino, that's my guy. <laughs> and uh, yeah, he's a cutie. And we just don't post a lot about our, about our private um, life on social media at this time. I did in the beginning and then right now we're just choosing not to, not to post um, our private life on social media. That could change. But right now, it is what it is. But yes, I am in a relationship. The next thing is, is Stassi gray and white or light tan and white? So her official color is called a gold and white. So she has like the kind of like the black in her ears, but her official color is gold and white. I actually wanted a red and white Shisu when I first started looking at the breed, but when I found her breeder, I absolutely fell in love with her Shisus, and um, golden white is what she mainly breeds and what she had, so that's how I got Stasi, and I think I hit the jackpot. All right, the next question is, are you still using NuVet Plus? Yes, I am. So I um, do use NuVet Plus. These are their daily vitamins that I give them. They each get one of these. And then I also give New Joint Plus, and Grayson gets three of them because it goes by weight, and then the other dogs each get one. So absolutely, I am still giving the New Vet Plus. Another question I had is what you were feeding, but I've already answered that in the um, video prior to this one. Yeah, prior to this one, and it's Life's Abundance, so we won't go into, into that again. Um, what happened to your husband? So, unfortunately, he was diagnosed with a very, very aggressive brain tumor. It was, it's called glioblastoma. So if you're familiar with GBM or glioblastoma, you know that the um, survival rate is really, really low with that type of cancer, and it's horrible. It's a horrible disease. Um, he fought it like so strong and so well for 13 months. And I think during that 13 months, it really did prepare me for the ultimate um, end game, I guess, because I know in the beginning I was devastated like anyone would be. I mean, we were together since I was 15 years old. Um, but that time where, that 13 months where I was his primary caregiver, I really saw so many changes in him that made me so sad. And so it really kind of, it kind of prepared me for um, what was going to happen like a lot sooner than when it happened. I do think that when you have a loved one that goes through a terminal illness and you see the changes that it makes in them, it really makes you sad. Um, and it kind but at the same time, it prepares you as well for um, something that you wouldn't have been as prepared for if there was a sudden death like a um, an accident or something like that but all death is horrible but it's a part of life and we need to move on and go on with our lives right so I live my life in positivity and I don't like to dwell on the past and I don't like to dwell on the negative and life is too short 
that is what I tell everyone all the time. Life is so short. So he wanted me to be happy and you know, I know that he's looking down on everything that I do and is, I would like to think that he's proud and it, you know, he's, he's up there, you know, living the good life in heaven with God, if you believe in God, which I do. So, all right, enough of that, enough of that. Um, the next thing, what are all of your dog's personalities like? Oh my goodness, so this is a fun one. Um, let's go, let's start with, uh, let's start with Stassi. So, I asked the question once before, who do you think the diva is and who do you think the princess is in Stassi and Harper? And it was really amazing to me that most people thought that Stassi was the princess and Harper was the diva. It is so the opposite. So Stassi is definitely the diva and Harper is the princess. Now what do I mean by that? What are their personalities like? So they are both very easy dogs very easy like you wouldn't even know they were here they are no trouble they are quiet they are sweet both of them um very very loving just all around awesome awesome girls they really are they really are amazing um but stassi is a little diva like she if you um, follow us on Instagram and you see like some of the little playing videos that I post sometimes between her and, and the other dogs, she's the one that is right up there and she will get that toy. Like she's like, oh no bitch, you giving me that toy, I'm gonna get it. I might have to wait in the wings, but I'm gonna steal it from you and I'm gonna get it. Um, so she is diva in every sense of the word, but so sweet, so loving, um, so quiet. None of my dogs bark none of them none of the four bark they're all quiet as you can hear right now what they do most of the time is sleep that is what they do um they sleep most of the time they do have their times where they play and they like to play stassi loves to play she loves to play with toys um she doesn't really care for like Grayson or Finley playing with her though. She really, she's almost like she's a diva. She's like, leave me alone. Let me just, you know, be by myself. She likes to cuddle. She doesn't mind cuddling. But if Grayson comes up to her, she will tell her off. Like she will tell her off and she will hold her own. And she's been known to like growl and snap at her. Not to be mean, but almost to say, back off bitch. And she gets her point across because they do not fool with her. They really don't. They just stay away. They're like, okay. Um, so that's her personality. Harper is a sweet, sweet baby. She lives to be loved. Everyone who meets her loves her to death. She's like, love me, love me, love me, love me. That is her personality. She doesn't like to play with toys. She never really cared to play with toys. Maybe when she was very, very young. But she really is not one to play with toys much. If you see those videos of them playing, she's usually on the bed. You know, just watching everything go by. She loves food. Uh, she is a food monger. Loves, loves, loves her food. Loves her treats. And um, just a sweet, sweet baby. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on her because there's something that I wanna reveal about her in a, another video, but I'm not gonna go into that because it's gonna be, you know, a little lengthy um, going into um, what I'm gonna tell you about her, but we're gonna say that for another video because I need some content, right? Okay, Grayson. Grayson is the old English sheepdog and she is a goofball is what she is. Her personality is completely puppy. She is 19 months old, I think. She's 19 months old. She's still a puppy in every sense of the word. She thinks that I am her play toy. She is stuck up my butt constantly. She like thinks I'm her toy and she's right there all the time. She's very active. She's very playful. However, she doesn't like to be, um, she's not crazy. She's not a crazy dog. Like she will go in her crate and just go to sleep. She'll get her little play time in and then she will lay down in the middle of the floor and go to sleep. So I love her personality. She's, um, she's not very, I don't want to say loving. She is loving. She loves to be, um, 
she loves she loves attention she is an attention whore she loves attention um, and she loves to be pet but you can't just like Stassi and Harper you can just sit and pet them and they're calm and they're not gonna like go get all crazy hyper Grayson when you go to pet her she's like oh I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. So that's kind of her personality. She's loving, but she doesn't just like to, like to, for me to just sit and pet her. She's a little hyper when it comes to, when you give her attention, she wants more. That's her personality, she wants more. She's a big goofball, big goofball, and I love everything about her, and I really am enjoying having um, her as a big dog. I love it. It's the reason why I want another big dog because I can see us doing a lot of things with the two big dogs, like taking them to the beach, taking them on a run or a jog, you know, taking them um, to walk by the beach. Things that the little girls are really not interested in. They're more like, I'll take 10 steps and then bloop, they plop down and do not want to walk. So that's why, you know, I'm really enjoying having a big dog too. The best of both worlds. All right, the next thing is, what do you love about each of them? So Stassi and Harper, I definitely love their calmness, their easygoing personalities, their sweet, loving, sit in my lap, therapy, kind of just, you know, pet them and they just are just staying there, staying there and just loving it. So I love that. Oh, I forgot about Finley. How can I forget about Finley? Um, okay, Finley is the pug. So, Finley's personality, like what is her personality like, right? Sorry, Finley. Um, her personality is straight up clown goofball. That is what she is. She's a hyper little thing, it, so hyper. She's like constantly like zoom, 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 zoom. She's really easy too though. She's not a barker, none of them are. Um, and she loves food. She will eat her food and everybody else's food like all the time, all day long. She will get as big as, as, big as this RV if I let her. She she's, loves food, loves food. She loves toys and her and Grayson are best friends, but I have to watch interaction between her and Grayson because Finley is a pug and she has that short, short snout and if she gets overheated, she could die. So I really, I can only let them play in very short amounts of time and then I have to kind of separate them a little bit because Finley will play until she drops and that is not good. So um, I do have to kind of watch that with them and that's another reason why I want another big dog because Grayson needs somebody to run around with and play and these dogs are just not run around play kind of dogs. They're just not. So um, what I love about Finley, so I love all of that about her. Uh, I think I said what I loved about Stassi and Harper, and then I love Grayson's just um, fun personality, goofball self. I love that she can go on walks with me and not really get tired out, um, and I really love everything about them. I love all of their personalities. They're really cool. They're really cool dogs, all of them. Okay, so why did you choose a doodle over a purebred and how did you know it was a good breeder since doodles can't be shown in the AKC? Wow, okay, so that is a loaded question and I'm sure I'm gonna get some hate on this, but you know me, I'm gonna tell you how I feel, whether you like it or whether you don't like it, um, this is how I feel. So if you go back in my videos, I did do quite a, um, a lengthy video on video on how to find a good breeder now I'm not gonna say that my views have changed on that but some of the things that I said in that video I don't necessarily truly believe today um, and there are different reasons for that so let me just tell you that what kind of like my beliefs are today and why I feel perfectly fine getting a doodle, which is not a purebred. So, first of all, to me, a backyard breeder is someone who doesn't have any regard for what they are breeding. They are only breeding for money, and they don't care if they are breeding dogs who have congenital issues or anything that would exclude them from their breeding program. Um, I do not agree with that. I agree, well, 
how do I want to say that? So I don't agree with anybody breeding those types of dogs. If you are breeding healthy dogs and you are doing some health testing that is prevalent in the breed, then support that. Um, I support it. So the breeder that I chose to be on the waiting list with does health testing on her dogs and um, she does exclude dogs from the breeding program if they have any known defects. Um, if you know, and sometimes you don't know that until you breed a pair of dogs together and if they have something that shows up in their puppies, you know, the, the responsible thing to do would be to stop breeding those dogs and this breeder does do that. Um, where my views have changed is I do not believe that you have to show your dogs in order to be a good breeder. I do believe that there are good breeders out there that are doing the right thing. They love their dogs. They um, do some health testing on the prevalent issues within that breed. And they are responsible in the fact that they are not just breeding and breeding and breeding and breeding or keeping their dogs in filthy, you know, situations or anything like that. So that's two totally separate issues. Um, that's more of like a puppy mill backyard breeder situation. And, the, and I don't agree with that at all. I don't ever agree with buying a dog in a pet store. So I still hold true to that because any good breeder, whether it is a doodle breeder or a purebred breeder will want to know where their puppies are going to you know go to what kind of homes they're going to and you have some responsible doodle breeders out there that are doing all of these things so you know they are health testing and they are um, caring about the homes that their dogs are going to they are picking homes based on you know um, what's right for their puppies so just because they're not purebred and not being shown doesn't mean that it's you know a bad thing in my eyes I used to feel differently I used to buy into that whole you know oh if they're not being shown then you know they're not good breeders and I I've changed my my thoughts on all of that and for several different reasons and I'm not going to go into all of that because again that would probably be a topic for a whole separate video so let's save it for that if you want to hear about that let me know and I will film my my current thoughts in depth on how I feel why I feel that way and I will be happy to share even though it's not going to be popular I know that I'm going to get a lot of flack from breeders and I just want um, this to be clear I am not saying I am against purebred breeders at all I love purebred breeders I would go back when I you know God forbid if ever, anything ever happens to Stassi I am going right back to her purebred show breeder and getting another Shizu like Stassi so I have nothing against purebred breeders I have everything against pet stores and irresponsible breeders that's what I'm against and um, I have nothing against rescues I think that we rescues are needed in this world and God bless all of you who do rescue I think that that's a very important um, thing as well but it's not for everybody so I try and be fair and I think that my views are fair um, it's not a popular view it's probably not going to sit well with some people but I'm okay with that because that's my thoughts on it and and I have a right to my opinion just like everybody else so let's move on all right the next thing is um, did you leave or sell all of your dog stuff like clothes grooming table etc when you sold your house so I did pack up most of my stuff I just took bare minimum of what I thought that I uh, was going to use and need and so I have all of that here with me in the RV and I do have everything still packed up in the storage however I am not going to be able to fit all of that in my house so I am building a much much smaller home than what I had before I'm not going to have the space that I had I may not even have room for Stassi's grooming table <laughs> 
oh that that hurts my heart but it is what it is and I may not have room for her table I may have to do something a little bit different um, as far as where I do her top knots look we've done fine without the table so it's not like I need it so if it's going to be a problem then I'll sell that table um, I just don't know what I'm gonna be able to fit and I'll just have to wait and see when I get there I am bringing my grooming table and I can tell you that everything in the new house has definitely been around the dogs like oh I need to do this because of the dogs I need to do that because of the dogs I need to do this because of the dogs now if money was no object I would have a bomb ass setup um, but money is an object so I have to you know do what my budget affords and I'm you know I'm doing what what I can afford and it's going to be a big laundry tub in my um, garage and I'm gonna have my big grooming table right next to the laundry tub which is a hydraulic grooming table so it'll can lower down to the floor the big dogs can get up on the top I can raise it and then they can get into the laundry tub so that's gonna work out pretty good I'm putting an air conditioner in the garage for the dogs um, so I'm doing a few things but if money was no object I would build a whole room like like set up with the shower the doggy shower and all that stuff but I can't do all of that so you can do you know you got to do what you can do as far as the clothes I do plan on selling a lot of it I don't really put a whole lot of clothes on the dogs and I had a lot of that stuff for when Stassi was little and things like that so I really think I'm gonna have a big sale on everything that I don't need and use and that goes for everything everything there's so many things that I'm gonna have to sell everything is in storage now I tried to get rid of a lot of things before the sale of the house but you know how that goes so I will have a sale with a lot of things um, that I just absolutely don't need anymore so downsizing downsizing that's the goal right okay uh, when do you think you will be moving in your new home so the Builder said September, but we did get a few rain days, rainy days, so I'm not sure if it's going to be September or early October, but it's not going to be long, so I'm really, really excited about that. Are you moving there alone? No. My guy is um, moving with me, and we will be together on the coast, right by the beach, um, in our new home, so I'm really excited about that as well. Um, do you still do photography? No, I actually sold my photography studio in October, I think it was. So much happened last year. So I sold my photography studio. I was a newborn photographer for 10 years. And I sold my home, moved into the RV. Like, so much has been going on. So I got completely out of photography. And I bought two coffee shops. So I am now an owner of two coffee shops it's a franchise it's a New Orleans brand called PJ's coffee and if you um, are on Instagram you can go to PJ's of Bell Chase that's one of them that's my traditional location um, that's my baby location I love that location it's just a cute little coffee shop and I love it um, and then my other location that I just bought which I love as well is PJ's underscore Clearview W Esplanade. If you go to my Instagram, you'll see links to both of them on there. But it's a PJ's coffee shop, two locations. My goal is to have three or four of those because you really can't make a lot of money with one. You really need more than one to make a decent living. That's what's been taking up most of my time. Now I do still still have my side hustles. So I am a LipSense distributor. I do Rodan and Fields and Touchstone Crystal, which is my jewelry, and I love that. Those are just my side hustles. It's just stuff that I really, really love. I support. I believe in the products, and so I share them. Um, but my main business are my coffee business, and um, I'm also an Optavia health coach, which that I just started. I'm kind of dabbling in that. I'm not really sure I'm going to stay with that or not. It's up in the air, but I do love Optavia. I love the program. Um, so I'll tell you more about that maybe in another video, but I, um, 
I love the program and I've had a lot of success with it. So I was kind of dabbling in the coaching to see if I would like it or not. Um, so that's where I am right now. And then the last question is, how much weight have you lost? So I started my weight loss journey about five years ago and in total I have lost 120 pounds. Yes. So all on my own, I did not have weight loss surgery. I did it all with diet. And then once I got most of the weight off, I did incorporate exercise in there. But to tell you the truth, it's been 95% diet. And Optavia was a program that um, really helped me. I did a few things over the five years, I'm not gonna lie. I did do, you know, I did clean eating, I did ideal protein, I did Optavia, I did a few things. When I would get tired of one, I would try something else because you can only do something for so long. Um, but over the past five years, I have lost 120 pounds. I am about 15 pounds from my goal. I might go an extra five just to um, give myself that leeway of, you know, eating good during the week and then, you know, eating what I want on the weekends because we do like to go out and eat and do things like that. We like to socialize. So I might go. I might go a, a few extra pounds, but I'm almost there. I am almost there. So that is it for this video. Thank you so much for your questions. I know this is so long-winded, but I, you know I am Italian and I talk and I cannot be short, so it is what it is. But thank you so much for following. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I will catch you guys on the next video. Bye guys, have a great day. Mwah! And then these two have just been sleeping in the whole video. So I don't even know if you see them. I think you see them a little bit on the sides, but um, hopefully you got a good glimpse of them too. All right, guys, have a great day. Bye-bye. So I, um, hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today we're gonna be doing a question and answer with moi. And I went to my, um, uh, uh, Get it together, Roxanne. All right, let's do this. I went to, um, why can I get this together? I just do not know. Focus, girl, focus.